Right? Yeah, that's good. Am I? Yes. Okay. So for this afternoon's first session, it's a guided meditation. And the guided meditation I'm going to do uh, this afternoon, saving it to the last opportunity for myself. And that is a meditation on loving kindness of Metta. And for loving kindness, I prefer to look upon it like lighting a beautiful warm fire. Hello, little teddy bear. <laughs> okay, teddy bear is going to drop in a moment. Bee. <laughs> so anyway, the loving kindness meditation starts by lighting a warm fire. And to light a fire, you can't just put a match to a wet, sappy log. You have to use something which easily takes a fire, like paper or fire lighters. And when you actually light that fire on something simple, then once that piece of paper has taken the flame, then you can put on the twigs and kindling and bigger pieces of wood. When that fire is very strong, you can put on anything onto that fire and it will take the flame. So this is the same with loving kindness. We start with something simple. And then after something simple, we can take it deeper into other things, other beings. And then eventually, when the fire is very strong, it's amazing. You can find you can put on what you thought was impossible to burn, and that will take the flame as well. We build it up stage by stage. And in this meditation, I will guide you into building up the power of loving kindness by having uh, easy or well, hard and harder objects, starting with easy ones. And then it soon gets to be a very powerful loving kindness meditation. So, but first of all, I invite you just to close your eyes and have just a gentle loving kindness towards your own body. You're sitting here. And making sure you're sitting in a comfortable position. So making sure that the legs are comfortable, the butt is comfortable, and that means sometimes moving it, adjusting it. You may not get it right at first, but you are patient enough and you are determined enough to keep on adjusting the body until the most comfortable position is found for you. And once you're in a comfortable meditation position, that's in the bottom of your body, then the same at the top of your body as well. If you can't be kind to your own body, it's difficult to generate that loving kindness to other things. Your body is, is directly in front of you. You're with it all the time. I'm kind to my back, to my torso, my shoulders as well. I loosen my shoulders so I can hardly feel any tension there at all. My arms and my hands, making sure that they are quite comfortable. And sometimes I do ask, hands, are you comfortable like that? Do you want to be adjusted? my neck and my head. I'm being as kind to my body as I possibly can. It's like when you go to bed at night, you tuck yourself in, you get the most comfortable position you possibly can. 
And then you can have a nice sleep, quiet sleep. But even small things, I do not ignore. So sometimes I just twist my body around a bit to make it a little bit more comfortable. And I do breathe in softly. Only two or three breaths. Doesn't take much to see, just to breathe in. Peace. To breathe out, let go. Breathe in peace. And breathe out, let go. Breathe in peace. And breathe out, let go. I feel my body is pretty well set up. If during the meditation you find your legs or your hands or your back is sore, please take the time to move, to adjust. If you adjust your body while you're meditating, yes, you do disturb the progress, but not much. And after maybe going back, a little bit, then you can continue meditating without any disturbance at all for much longer. You soon make up anything you've lost. It's an efficient way of meditating. And then I require a meditation object, which is easy to meditate loving kindness with. And I use an imaginary object. For those who have participated in one of my loving kindness meditations before, you will know I usually choose a little kitten, a cat. I, I like cats. If you prefer a little dog, maybe a puppy or your dog back home, or you prefer a bird, or anything which is, you feel is feelings of tenderness and protection and care for. One lady said she didn't like little animals, but in her apartment, she had a pot plant little plant growing on her balcony. And she was very caring and protective of that little plant. And that became her first object of meditation. Imagine it. And for me, I go through this little scenario of just walking in some part of the world and hearing this sound, this sound which I can recognize as an animal in distress. I'm not quite sure what animal that is, but I can feel the pain on its voice. And so I follow that sound. It brings me closer and closer. And I can feel that in some little corner, dark, hidden, protective corner, there is this little animal who is suffering so deeply, who is in pain, who is hungry and unprotected. As I go closer, I can perceive, pick out, his two little eyes looking at me. And I can understand straight away that those little eyes belong to a cat, a little kitten. By the sound of her voice, it's telling me that it's very scared, but in pain and hungry. And as I keep that eye contact with this being, 
this is in my imagination, but I use this imagination because I can make the scenario whichever way I want. I imagine this little kitten staring at me, just hoping, hoping that at last it could find someone who it can trust, someone who will never hurt it, someone who can protect it and be with it as it grows. And when I keep that eye contact in front of me, I start saying those words of loving kindness. Dear little being, whoever you are, whatever has happened to you, the door of my heart will always be open to you. When I make a promise like that, I will keep it. And I see a little head come a little bit further forward out from the shadows. It is a small kid. I see its ears. I can see its fur. But unlike most kittens or cats, the fur is not clean. I can assume that from an early time after its birth, it got separated from its mother. It's been trying to survive on its own and how difficult that must have been. There's no food and other beings, other animals, scratching it or biting it and chasing this little kitten away. It's been rejected. And every time it's tried to make contact with someone, it's always been hurt and receded. And this time it's receded into a cold, dark, lonely corner of the world. And my job is to try and encourage trust in this little kitten. As I look into its eyes, I imagine all these feelings of loving kindness, of protection, of sincerity. If I say I'm going to do something, I will do it. I cannot harm you, little kitten. And I can find some food for you, whatever little kittens eat. Find some nice milk, some fish, chickens. And I look at this cat with so much loving kindness. And the cat comes further out from the hole. And I can see on its body there's so much dark matter caked to its fur. I assume it's dry blood. That poor little kitten has been scratched and bitten and chased away. And I hold out my hand, extending it very gently, because I know if I move fast, that kitten will think it's another trick and it will get hurt again. It's been hurt too many times already. So I extend my hand very slowly towards that kitten. And I still keep on pouring out these thoughts, these intentions, these motivations of kindness towards this kitten. So it will trust me. I will not hurt you. Please allow me the privilege of caring for you, of serving you. See if I can use my time and my power to heal your wounds, to feed you up, to protect you, to play with you, and see you grow into an unusual little cat. 
I care for you, looking already. Allow me to be your friend. And as I keep putting my hand closer to the kitten, the kitten lets me touch her. You know I have to go so softly and slowly. And you can feel the, the, the fur is dirty. It hasn't had an opportunity to clean itself, to heal itself. It's been so desperate and so afraid. It's just gone into this hole to protect itself. And with all the gentleness which I can manage to muster up, I lift this little kitten. It's in one hand. It's such a tiny little kitten. And it keeps on looking at me. And I at her. And this little kitten, I can feel, is ready to jump away at any moment. It still doesn't trust me. It's trusted so many other beings and ended up, ended up being hurt, hurt terribly. So when I pick it up, I pick it up very gently and slowly. I'm still looking at, looking at it in its eyes. Dear little kitten, I will never hurt you. Please let me care. And let me protect you. Let me make sure that you always have enough to eat and a safe space to sleep. Let me watch you grow up. Give me that privilege to serve you, little kitten. As I pick it up, see it's just bones and flesh with scabs of blood on it. I don't want to heal those scabs with medicine or with water. I want to heal that part of your body with love, with kindness. And I know the power of such kindness. And I pick up that little kitten and hold it close to my own chest. And it lets me. As it comes closer to my chest, I can feel it relax more. Its body becomes softer. I can feel it's much more at ease. I will never hurt you, little kitten. Please let me care for you. And so I hold that little kitten close to my chest. It closes its eyes. It trusts me. And as I hold it, I can see all these wounds on its body. But I just want to give it warmth and safety and kindness. And as I hold it against my chest, I feel that area in my chest above my heart that seems to me to be the source of loving kindness in the heart area. It's an emotion, not a, a thought, not an intellectual idea. And I can feel that warmth, that tingling in my chest. And I imagine these rays of love, of kindness, of protection, of care coming out from my chest and bathing the body of the little kitten, going right into the body and going to its little tail, going to the end of each one of its little paws, going through its body. It doesn't matter how hungry you are, who feed you kindness, first of all, and go to its head, to each one of its whiskers and its two little ears. Its eyes are closed now, and its mouth. Dear little kitten, 
you have a protector, you have a friend, someone who will care for you. If there's something you need, I will find it for you. I'm a resourceful monk. And that kin relaxes more and more. And I don't know if I'm just imagining this, but the little kitten starts to purr. The first time probably in its life it's ever done that. And I hold it as it relaxes so deeply. And I still pour as much loving kindness as I can into his little body. Somehow he knows that it is safe. <coughs> he knows his hunger will be satisfied soon and his thirst will be quenched and he will have someone who loves it and cares for it for the rest of his life. Everybody needs that. It's my honor and privilege to give it to this little imaginary kitten. And as I pour out these feelings of loving kindness, which I visualize as this warm, healing, golden light coming out of my chest into that little kitten, imaginary. But the feeling gets stronger and stronger and stronger. This is how I light my fire of loving kindness on this imaginary little being. And once it's strong enough, I put that little being down. And I imagine a real being, someone in this world who is also suffering. Even though they may be a human being, may be big, may be mature, may be even with money and funds. I come across so many lonely, pain-driven beings, people with cancers, going through operations, elderly people who other people have abandoned, so lonely, so in pain, so rejected. I choose one now who just went through a heart operation last week, open heart surgery, an elderly lady, I promised I would chant for her, send her loving kindness. Now I'm doing that. Imagine her. Imagine her the last time I saw her over in Australia. She's an elderly lady, a very trusting and very kind. And I see her, I imagine her in her hospital bed recovering from the heart surgery. Dear being, dear friend, the door of my heart is open to you. I was a scientist, so I don't know how this works, but it does work. To know that somebody is thinking of you, even though they're on the other side of the world, they're caring for you. May you be recovering and healing from that open heart surgery. May the pain be diminished. May the body get more healthy. You know you have a friend. I've known you for years. May your body heal and your fear vanish. And may you leave that hospital and come to talk and listen to all my bad jokes at the monastery again. 
I care for you. I get all this loving kindness in my chest. I imagine that she's right in front of me in the bed. I pour this loving kindness into her body. Just like from a great big beaker, which is my heart, and pouring into her wounded body. Not just her heart, but into her throat, which was also very sick. Right through her head and her ears and her eyes. And through the whole torso, through her legs and arms. My dear friend, even though you're in hospital and sometimes people can't visit you, you are cared for. May you recover. May you be well and happy. People say I have a powerful mind. I'm giving all that power to you for your healing and happiness and well-being. It costs nothing to care. So you can give as much care as you can muster up in your own mind and body. So I really blast, zap, this person who is injured with loving kindness. Just like that little kitten. And just like that little kitten, she relaxes more, feels more at ease, more at peace, which allows the healing to happen to her. There's all those parts of her body which have been cut apart by the surgeons can now receive that wonderful energy of someone being kind. And then I change the object again. Once that warmth, that's that, once that loving kindness is strong, I change it to somebody else. What I usually do, without opening my eyes, I imagine all the beings in this room, all the human beings, the cooks, the attendants, the visitors, my fellow Buddhist monastic, my agenda. May all the beings in this room, each one of us, have our pain, our aches, our hunger. We too can take as much loving kindness as other people can give us. Just to know that you're cared for, you feel safe. You're not alone. Like that little kitten. The people care. And I'm encouraging that in my own body for each one of you in this little room in the Oxford Buddhist Vihara. Those of you who are doing this with me, also think of all the people in the house in which you are living in right now. If there's no people right in your house, you're alone. To all the people close by, even if you don't like them or know them, there's no impediment to giving this beautiful loving kindness. And again, I focus on the area around my heart, my physical heart. As I focus on that area, it does tend to tingle. I can feel energy there. And I pour that energy out like a ray of light, of golden light. For me, the color of loving kindness is always gold. And I pour it out to each one of you in this room. And you do the same for me. Pour your golden energy out. Now, 
even though the, some of the people listening in, I'm not quite sure where you're listening from. It may be in other countries and other parts of the world. But nevertheless, we are connected over this internet. Please, the loving kindness which you're feeling right now, please radiate it to everybody who's listening to this talk, this guided meditation. May all beings who are participating in this loving kindness meditation session, may you all receive each other's loving kindness. It doesn't matter you don't know each other. The very fact that you're listening is enough. The unconditioned, un Distinguish, not so deciding amongst one person and rejecting another person. May all beings in this room, friends or enemies or in between, may all beings listening to this feel the loving kindness coming into you from others. May you receive this golden energy. And you too can direct it to those areas of your body which really need it. The place where there are wounds, where there are tumors, where there are things in your body which need so much healing. Imagine all that energy from all the people who are doing this meditation, wherever they are. Receive it. And once it's in your body, then your loving kindness spread out, spread that out to everybody else who's listening. May all beings in this little group be happy, be at peace, and be healthy. Don't resist it. Take down all those barriers all that intellectual resistance, all those conditioning of thinking you're not worth it. You are worth it. If you trust me and trust I attend, you know you're worth it. That's all the belief and faith which I ask of you. The faith to understand that you do deserve to receive this beautiful energy of loving kindness. What does it feel like to receive this energy from even people you haven't met yet? We join it all together like a real internet of connecting together and healing together. You find the more you give, the more energy of loving kindness, the more golden light you have to share for all others. You need it. And you need to be cared for, to give and also to receive. And then we go even further. That loving kindness soon becomes so great you cannot keep it in the room in which you are sitting. It kind of breaks through the walls and the windows and the roofs and the floors. Loving kindness can easily go through concrete and brick and steel. It goes around the neighborhood in which you are sitting. Here I'm sitting in Oxford. Goes through the walls of this little Wihara to our neighbors, to the people who live in the same street, the people who live in the same neighborhood, like this golden light which starts spreading 
And I visualize it spreading over these houses in our local village, just on the edge of Oxford, going down to the River Thames, which is close by, and being given not just to human beings, not just to friends, but to everybody. When the sun shines, it shines on all beings, the good beings, the selfish beings. Sometimes those selfish beings need it more than the good ones. So I give an extra boost of kindness to those who are confused in this world, who are lonely, who don't know how to relax and open to others. I give it to all the animals and the birds who fly in the sky, the animals who live under the ground. Many of them may be hibernating now, where you have very peaceful dreams. To all the insects which buzz through the air, to all beings in the neighborhood, you don't need to feel afraid. I care for you. We care for you. As this loving kindness energy builds, it starts to go throughout the whole country in which you live. In this country of UK, there are people suffering People in jail, people in hospital, people wondering how they're going to survive. People who are happy with their hopes and dreams. Who want to look after their children or look after their elderly. May all beings in this country have the confidence that other people are supporting you. They're supporting you just like if there is a sports match, the people in the stadium shouting for the others, for their team. Make those people playing play even more beautifully. We all respond to support to people who give to us, who care for us. May all beings in this country, in the British Isles, may they all be at peace and happy, no matter who they are. Loving kindness is always more powerful when it's indiscriminate, when you don't keep something out and something in. It doesn't depend on whether you like them or don't like them, whether you know them or you don't know them whether you understand them or don't understand them, you just give it indiscriminately. And I know when I have given this indiscriminate loving kindness you know, to animals, dangerous animals like the snakes or the bears, you give that loving kindness to them. And you see those animals Realize that you understand them. They'll never ever harm you because you will never harm them. So, in the country of UK, may all beings be happy and at peace. That's your gift for them. And it's amazing they give that gift back as well. You feel more energy in your heart region. The ability to radiate loving kindness gets greater. And you may realize that I should have given this loving kindness indiscriminately to all in the country in which you live. You've also given it to some people who have hurt you and have hurt others. They need it more. So don't take it away from them. 
with loving kindness to all beings. And we expand that loving kindness even further. As it goes over the coastlines of this many islands of Great Britain, goes over to Europe, goes over to the United States and the Americas, Canada and Central America, goes down to Africa. As this golden glow starts to spread all over the world, goes to Asia and India and China and North Korea, everywhere, don't exclude anything, goes down to Australia and to New Zealand. As you're holding this whole planet in this warm glow of loving kindness, peace, giving, protection, service, and not just to human beings, to all beings, all sentient beings, even to the, the earth itself and the trees and the plants, why not? May all the ecostructure of this world heal as you vow to tread lightly on this planet from this beautiful loving kindness. And the more you give, the more you possess to give, the more you have, and you give it freely. And as you spread this loving kindness throughout this whole world, you may even spread it up into the skies to the ages of this universe. Why not? And how do you feel inside right now? The reason around your heart, can you feel that tingling power of loving kindness energy? And then you may have realized there's one person you've left out. And that person is the being who bears your name. Imagine that you don't open your eyes, but imagine your eyes were open and that being was standing right in front of you. You. That being is no different than the little abandoned kitten. You've been hurt so many times, scratched and bitten, let down. Sometimes that pain, you cover it up. Please don't cover it up now. This beautiful golden light of loving kindness go into your body and mind. That loving, healing energy. People actually do care. Go to your past and all the pain and difficulties which you encountered, the abuse, the great disappointments of your past. Let that loving kindness soften your past until your history becomes a peace. You don't blame anybody, you don't blame yourself. You don't seek to amend the past, which cannot be changed. But you give love to change your attitude to the past. It softens and heals, like loving kindness does to the body. And then you give loving kindness to your future. By which I mean, you just imagine the best. 
Like I said to my, my little kin, I will always feed you, care for you, look after you, protect you. Say that to yourself. You give this beautiful, non-judgmental loving kindness, this being who bears your name. I care for me. And I care for my future. Whatever happens, I would always be forgiving, kind, and not so harsh in my judgments of myself, my conduct. And give loving kindness to yourself right now. May I be happy and well right now. It's beautiful loving kindness. You put it inside your own body and you feel it just spreading from the heart up to the head, to the ears, down from the, the heart through your torso. Many parts of your body may have been injured by bacteria, by parasites, by tumors. Let that loving kindness energy soak in wherever it's needed, down to your legs and the bottom, down your arms to your fingers. Every part is formed and healed by this beautiful loving kindness energy. And don't be intellectual and say, is this loving kindness, is this compassion? It's just caring. You care for yourself. You care for all other beings not treating yourself and others differently. Imagine that beautiful golden light of loving kindness spread over the whole universe and beyond, including you. Then because there comes a time to finish this meditation. We don't really want to finish it totally. So imagine the light of loving kindness, which is spread all over the world. Imagine it coming back, drawing in. Believe the warmth out there. Let the warmth stay in the furthest parts of the world. Bring the light back in until the light comes back in to the islands of Great Britain. Come back in to Oxford or wherever you happen to be sitting right now, whatever land, whatever city, whatever village. For us sitting here into the Bikuni Wihara in Italy just outside of Oxford, into this house, into this room. And when you bring in all this incredible light, this golden light, imagine it forming this intense ball of light, of loving kindness energy. The warmth is still out there, let it stay out there. But the light comes in. And imagine it coming into your own body. It's in your own body, above your heart. And imagine your heart like an open lotus flower, a white colored lotus, pure and fresh. It's like the only thing which is pure enough to hold that energy. And as that beautiful ball of loving kindness goes and rests on top of that lotus, 
Imagine the petals closing in around that lotus, closing in so softly to protect that loving kindness energy to be used at another time, another place, whenever it's needed. I'm going to be quiet for a couple of minutes. And then after a couple of minutes, the loving kindness meditation will be finished. Okay, when you're ready, please open your eyes to complete this meditation. Thank you for participating.